It's Maxine here from the zoo again and uh, today's episode we're going to be focusing on enrichment. Now if you haven't subscribed to our channel already for Northern Within Zoo please do so because every subscription helps and it helps support the zoo during this time and we really really appreciate it so if you could subscribe the button and ring the bell then that means that you'll receive notifications whenever we do put new videos out and we try and keep them keep them coming. There's always something happening here at the zoo and always something to talk about. So in today's episode, we're going to be looking at animal enrichment. Now, animal enrichment is something that we do in order to improve the lives of the animals in captivity. It basically keeps their brain going, it keeps them healthier, and it also encourages them to do natural species-specific behaviors. So there's five main categories of enrichment, and the main one, uh, the one that's most common, is food-based enrichment. And that is basically any type of enrichment, anything unusual in the way of food. Now that's not just giving them their food, that doesn't count. Um, the last thing you want to do is just give a bowl of food out to the animals because they'll, what they'll do is they'll just eat it up really, really quickly and then that's it, it's gone. Um, animals have a 24 hour day, you know, just like we do. So we need to make sure that we keep them occupied for as long as possible. So by making their food a challenging thing, then it really, really helps keep their minds occupied. So you can do food-based enrichment in the way of uh, giving them whole food. So instead of chopping their food up all nice and pretty and fine, you can give them whole, so that makes it a little bit more challenging for them to have to eat it. Or what you can do is you can scatter the food so you can chop it up really, really fine and scatter it far and wide in the enclosure. So that means it takes the animals longer to forage and find the food. So obviously that is a lot better than just giving it to them in a bowl. Or what you could do is instead of serving them chopped potato, is you could mash it up, put it in the microwave and smear it everywhere. So it's basically just making the process of them having their dinner, having their lunch last longer. Uh, and a little bit more interesting and different for the animals because you can imagine having potatoes every day might not be that exciting for you and me. And it's not as exciting for them either. So we've got to make it interesting for them. Other ways that you can do food enrichment is by hiding it inside of other items. So we use a lot of our paper sacks that we get for our animal feed. And what we'll do is we'll stuff these paper sacks with straw or hay or anything like that. And we'll put all the little bits of food inside of it. Or you can do like a mealworm or an insect feed inside of these paper bags. So the animal has to try and figure out how to get into the bag to get their food. Again, it just makes it a bit more interesting for them. The next type of enrichment is sensory enrichment. Now sensory is exactly what it sounds like. So that's sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste. So these can be things like uh, smelly things. So like, for example, the lynx love perfumes, uh, any kind of perfume. So we can spray them on different parts of the enclosure. They can go around and follow a scent trail. Uh, or you can do like a fish smear for the otters. So you literally get a fish and kind of rub it over a whole bunch of things. Obviously locking the animals in the house when you do this so that they can't see you doing it because again that's part of the enrichment process is that you want to surprise them so they get they get called into the house, they know something really exciting is going to happen, they wait in the house, you go out in the paddock, do all your secret stuff and then let them back out again and then boom, they have to go and follow a little scent trail to get to the end where there's probably like a jackpot prize which could be just hot fish. Um, so it's things that keep them busy. You can do blood trails with carnivores so like arctic fox and lynx you can do a little scent trail with them. Um, or like herbs, certain animals really respond a bit mad with herbs, um, a bit like catnip with your cat. Touch, we give the raccoons obviously uh, little rubber things or little rubber ducks, it's just something different for them to play with. Now the next category is cognitive or manipulative. Now these are things like puzzles or toys, so like a Kong, like you can get Kongs for your dogs, so it's like a really, really tough plastic thing that you stuck food in and then the dog has to roll it around and move it in order for food to fall out. Um, so you can do things like that or you can do like a puzzle feeder where the animal has to work out how to get the food out of it. And um, we use a few of these different type things like with the birds of prey, they have a little kind of drop feeder. Um, the raccoons are masters at opening things. So we put lids on really, really tight and watch them try and unscrew them. And they know how to unscrew them, they're amazing. 
Some other examples of cognitive um, enrichment items include cardboard twos, toilet rolls, um, ropes, balls, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, the list goes on. The next type of enrichment group is called social-based enrichment. And this can be really, really rewarding for the animals. So that's basically having a social grouping that's important for them. So for example, meerkats, they're not an individual species. They have to be part of a mob or a gang. So by providing them with a family group, that is enrichment for them because they can interact with each other and everyone's different, everyone has behaviors. Um, so that's really important for them. Or you can do mixed species exhibits. That also is enrichment. So for example, our crested porcupine and meerkat enclosure, they interact together. Um, it's not always massively positive, but it's certainly not negative. And I think they do learn from each other, which is quite exciting. We've got two lemur species in our lemur enclosure, the ring-tailed and the red-fronted lemurs. Um, the red front is of the more dominant species, but still it's like that really interesting interaction between them that makes it really rewarding. So by providing them with a family group or the ability to breed um, with certain species, that is really, really an important need to be ticked with enrichment. The other type of social enrichment is obviously from keepers. So, you know, it's that interactivity with keepers. We are quite hands-off with our animals. The only type of training that we do is husbandry training. So that's for like weighing or moving them uh, or crating them. We don't kind of do like tricks and stuff because that's not really important. But husbandry-based training is very good because it can help reduce the stress in an animal um, if you need to move them for whatever reason, if they needed to go to the vets for a checkup, you just don't know. So it's good to have them trained up and habituated to those types of activities just in case. Um, so that kind of interaction with keepers can be quite rewarding for animals because it gets them thinking. You know, animal training really gets them thinking because they have to kind of work things out and really think about things. So it's almost cognitive-based as well. The last type of enrichment is actually the physical environment. Um, so by, by providing the animals with an environment that is suitable for that species. So for example, the raccoon enclosure is full of trees and they've got a huge pond. That's like the happiest things ever. So by providing them naturally with those items, we have ticked a huge box of enrichment because the raccoons get to go outside 24 hours a day, climb the trees, do whatever they want. And that's the most natural behavior that a raccoon could possibly do. Um, the meerkats have like two meters deep of sand. Like you can't get any better than that for a meerkat. So that's what they want. That's their natural behavior. And then the other thing that we provide them with is we provide them with higher places so that they can do sentry duty. So that means they can sit right at the top of their enclosure and they can keep a lookout. That again is a natural behavior that they need to be able to express. So providing them with enclosures where they can do their natural behaviors is the best thing you can possibly do for them. The lemurs have got huge trees in lemur woods. The capybaras have got a pond so that they can uh, swim and soak themselves. Um, the otters have got a massive pond. You know, so it's every single thing that you can possibly think that the animal would need provided naturally in their enclosure for them. Um, and obviously in some cases where it's not provided naturally, then we will make a fake one. So like in the lynx enclosure, yes, they do have a tree in the middle of the enclosure, but we also built some platforms for them as well, um, just in case. And they love sitting up on the platforms. Cats love being up high. Now, what I've got here to show you is I've got a type of enrichment that you can actually do at home. Um, and this is something you can give to your dog or your cat if the cat's particularly food motivated. So this is called a snuffle mat, right? And what you would do with this is you would put it on the floor and basically you would sprinkle some dog biscuits or like cat biscuits, cat treats, whatever you want in it, in it and kind of ruffle it up like this. And what happens then is the dog spends ages kind of searching in between all these little bits and pieces of fabric to try and get the food out. And actually it'll make a bowl of food take them several hours to find all the bits. So we use things like this with our armadillos. We use it with mealworms because they love to dig. So it just takes them a lot of time. It encourages foraging behaviors. So they're very, very simple to make. All you need to do is get one of these rubber kind of doormats off of eBay. I think I got this for like five pounds. And if you've got some, if you've got some old clothes lying around the house, like fleeces, this is all this is. It's just strips of fleece material. So they're about 12 inches, 10, 12 inches long, not too thick, lots of different colors if you want to make it a little bit jazzy. And all you need to do is just pop it through the hole and make a double knot 
because you want it to be nice and secure so the animal doesn't actually pull it off. So I pulled it off like that. And just put it through the hole and tie it in a knot. And if you just do that along every single joint like that, before you know it, you've got a lovely snuffle mat. Now, that is something that will keep you busy for a little bit, so it's also enrichment for you, believe it or not. Um, but then once it's done, you can keep reusing it with your pets. Um, so they are really, really handy, and it's a really, really good idea. Um, I would encourage anyone at home to do enrichment for your pets, you know, especially once you start going back to work and your dogs are at home. This will keep your dog video busy when you're at work, so it'd be really, really handy. So again, I just put another bit on there. Yeah. Just have a little think about your animals at home because obviously they are literally sitting there and the most exciting part of their day, as you know, is you coming through that door. So it'd be nice for them to have something else to look forward to during the day when you're not there. So there's loads of different pet enrichments that you can get. Um, so have a little look on the internet and see what you can do. Obviously, whenever you're trying out new enrichment with your pets at home or any animals in fact, please do always supervise them. Um, you never know when something could go, could go wrong, um, especially if you're not used to kind of trying out new things. So, you know, animals' heads can get stuck, they can accidentally choke on stuff. So, you know, if you're, if you're there, make sure you've got all your knots nice and tight um, so your dog doesn't accidentally ingest anything. Because um, the last thing you want is for your animals to get hurt when you're trying to enrich them. Um, so please do supervise them with new activities. Just make sure 100% that they are safe before you leave them alone with any type of toys that you've got for them. If you're interested in helping the zoo with enrichment, uh, we do have an Amazon wish list which has lots of different enrichment things on there that we would love to have for our animals. We do have a lot already, um, but the more the merrier because enrichment stuff never like, we can never have enough. So there's bits of rope, there's toys, there's all kinds of stuff. So we really appreciate it. If anybody fancied it, you can, you can go onto our Amazon wish list and it gets shipped directly to us. But in the same hand, we also uh, accept donations direct. So if you guys have toilet rolls, if you have, I know everyone's got loads of toilet rolls, um, if you have big cardboard tubes like poster tubes, um, the rodents love them, like bits of rope and all kinds of stuff, that, that would just make the world of a difference. So, I mean, if you've got any lying around, then do get in touch with us because that would be awesome. But if not, then we do have an Amazon wish list as well. Um, but please do have a little look at some different enrichment ideas for your animals. And I hope you enjoyed having a little look at all the different videos of our animals today. And I hope you learned something. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, please do get in touch. Um, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we are trying to get enough sort of likes and subscribes to help support the zoo during this time. Um, and it's, it's very much appreciated. Um, so thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, stay safe. I'll see you soon.